Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbound Creation. In last week's video, I talked about somatization and the very real impacts that unexpressed emotions can have on our bodies. But I didn't always know this to be true, so I wanted to share with you guys the experiences that I've had that taught me this. So about four years ago, I experienced my first ever heartbreak following a breakup. Back then, I was definitely mostly led by, my, by the left side of my brain, so I had no real understanding of what emotions were their role in our, in our lives or how to process them. At the same time though, at around the same time, my stepdad recommended the book The Untethered Soul to Me. After reading the description on the back of the book, I was interested enough to, to dive in and start reading. And as I did so, things that I had experienced throughout my life started to make sense to me. Or at least I thought they did. <laughs> See, the, throughout the book, the author, Michael Singer, repeats, reinforces, and reiterates the fact that the only reason any of us ever suffer is because of our tendency to close whenever we experience something we don't like. The cure to this, he says, is simply to stay open. If you experience positivity, stay open. If you experience negativity, stay open. Regardless of what's happening, stay open. And upon my first read through of the book, what I thought he meant was, if you experience good, be happy. If you experience bad, be happy. <laughs> Regardless of what's happening in your life, be happy. And it made logical sense to me too, because how could you ever not be happy if you made the conscious decision to always be happy? <laughs> so that's what I tried to do. And within less than two weeks, I experienced my first ever anxiety attack. And the, the day after, I experienced my second one. Only this time, it was worse. This time, I felt like I was about to black out. So I lied on the floor, short of breath and paralyzed. I lied there for probably close to 10 minutes, willing myself to breathe as slowly, deeply, and steadily as possible. Eventually, the feeling of almost blacking out subsided enough for me to get back up and tell my parents what I had just gone through. So I didn't know enough back then to know that it was an anxiety attack. Luckily, nothing more came to happen that, that day. But when I, wo I awoke the next morning, I immediately noticed that my chest was tight and my lungs were restricted. But this time, probably because I realized that it was exactly how I felt immediately before my first two panic attacks, Something in me knew what to do. So without telling anyone, I hopped on a bike and I rode out to somewhere where I thought I could be alone. And almost the moment I felt that it was safe to do so, I started crying, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I cried for probably close to an hour before I felt like I could get back up and ride back to the house. On my ride back though, I noticed something. My breath had started to come easier to me. The tightness in my chest had faded and my mood had improved. So it was with that experience under my belt that I forged on after my breakup, recalling it any time I felt like the grief was too much for me to handle. I told you guys that story because it's the first time I remember ever personally experiencing somatization. 
though I didn't know what that word meant at the time or that it even existed. I think it was also the moment that I realized what Michael Singer meant when he said to always stay open regardless of what's happening in your life. What he was advising wasn't to grasp onto happiness regardless. It was to process, honor, accept, and love all your emotions regardless of any preconceived ideas you may have about what they are and what they reflect about you as a person. Of course, it was only just the start of my journey, so I still had a lot to learn, and I still do. <laughs> but ever since then, I've learned more not only about myself, but about different practices and modalities for how to process and release your emotions. I've learned a bit about Qigong, acupuncture, and acupressure, all of which fall under the umbrella of tr traditional Chinese medicine and somatic therapy, which I think of as a Western take on traditional Chinese medicine and other Eastern modalities. I've also learned about more on the chakras and the different ways our bodies release emotional energy and the different metaphysical bodies. And I've also learned a little bit more about Reiki and deepened my pr practices of yoga and meditation, both of which support all the other practices and modalities I just mentioned. Because ultimately, they're all just different approaches to the same thing. Next week, I plan to talk a bit more about these practices and modalities. So make sure to tune back, back in to my channel. But as for right now, Thank you so much for watching. I feel so honored to be able to share my thoughts and experiences with you guys. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. And if any part of what I said resonated with you, then please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing the video so it can reach more people. Also, make sure to comment down below if you're familiar with any of these practices and modalities, your experience level with them, and how you first came to know of them. One of the reasons I wanted to start doing YouTube was to be able to create and hold the space where we could have conversations about topics like this, and where we could all learn, share, and connect from each other. I so look forward to reading what you guys have to say, and thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>